Hafadei Todu Samzu, Sidus Masi, for being here today. The Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self Determination, and Regional Affairs, which I chair, which will, excuse me, will now convene at this roundtable informational briefing. For the record, in accordance with the open government law, public hearing notices were given to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets. The first notice went out on Tuesday, June 12th, 2019, and the second notice went out on Monday, June 17th, 2019. Today is Thursday, June 20th, 2019, and the time is now 1.18. The Haganya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority Executive Director has informed us that she will be off island and that Mr. Joe Santos, who has for many years been with HRRA, will represent the Haganya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. Likewise, we have informed other agency heads to send their technical experts over the next few roundtable informational briefings to represent their agencies. Today, the committee will focus on discussions pertinent to the current version of the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority Hagatnya Master Plan and associated design guidelines. Joining me for this public hearing is Senator Tello Taitagui and uh, other senators may be coming in as well. So thank you, Senator, her for being here at the informational briefing. We will conduct today's discussions and briefings to allow us to comprehensively understand the work completed and the work that is in progress for the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority in regards to the current version of the Hagatnya Master Plan and the associated design guidelines. The Hagatnya Master Plan is an immense undertaking that will influence the future landscape and composition of Hagatnya. We now have a newly impaneled Board of Commissioners, and likewise, we have a committee that is anxious to move the work of the Hagatnya redevelopment excuse me, uh, Restoration and Redevelopment Authority forward. In a direction for the future that is good for Hagatnya, its property owners and residents, and especially for all the people of Guam. Therefore, this committee wants to ensure that the master plan is not hastily pushed forward, but provided the information necessary to move them forward in a well-informed and thoughtful way. Their work will have a long-lasting uh, set of consequences that may impact our community's social, cultural, and physical fiber. And we are here today to help provide a baseline of information for the newly impaneled board of directors. This work has been ongoing for 20 years or more. In fact, some of our board of directors are the children or the grandchildren of some of the, those that were there at the very beginning of this journey. As we are all seated at this round table and are able to see each other face to face, this informational briefing is constructed so that the public becomes more informed and that our discussions today will help the authority, the newly impaneled board, the governor and the legislature make what may be sometimes hard but prudent decisions for Hagatnya and our island. The governor has reached out to relevant agencies and stakeholders calling for a technical assessment of the plan based on their respective areas of responsibilities and expertise. That reporting is due by July 15th of this year. Likewise, the committee is on the same page with the governor to provide technical information that will allow this master plan to move forward. With that, I yield to the, dis the delivery of those assessments that are due to the governor. Therefore, today, this first round table informational briefing will focus on the history of the contracts 
and the alignments of the deliverables that created the current version of the Hagatnya Master Plan and the associated guidelines uh, for the design guidelines. To date, this legislature through the speaker's office has officially received two documents. The documents are the August 2018 version of the Hagatnya Master Plan and the supporting design guidelines. In reviewing the contract, the committee realizes that there are other documents that have not yet been transmitted to the legislature, and those documents contain critical information for the decision-making process. The legislature has not been presented with the implement implementation plan. The current version of the Hagatnya Master Plan has been deliberated, discussed, and reviewed mainly by two entities, that being the authority itself and the Guam Economic Development Authority. There have been several community hearings and media engagements along the way, but the true public forum for discussing this immense plan that will engage and direct large sums of public funds is this legislature. This legislature will be obligated in making the decision on the master plan when the governor, upon her satisfaction, officially transmit the Hagatnya master plan to the legislature. At that time, a bill will accompany the master plan and this legislature by law will be obligated to act upon it within 45 days. Therefore, it is really important that all stakeholders, the general public, and decision makers become thoroughly informed. The committee intends to hold additional series of informational briefings after July 15th, when the agencies are due to submit their technical assessments to the governor on the current version of the Hagatnya Master Plan and Associated Design Guidelines. Today we will go over and discuss the contracts of the Hagatnya Master Plan and Associated Design Guidelines to have an understanding of the status and completion of deliverables. The documents are Task Order Number 1, HRRA Master Plan Update, Two, notice of decision by the HRA board with a spreadsheet of contractual phases. Three, amendment number two to task order number dated approved uh, August 4th, 2017. And then four, the no cost time extension dated October 1st, 2018. So I'd like to go ahead and identify and call forward the HRRA board members who are present here today. So we have uh, Mr. Nick Kaswani, if you could go ahead and uh, have a seat. Uh, we have Ms. Omaira Brunel Perry, oh, uh, who's going to sit in the audience and observe, so thank you for being here. We have uh, representing the HRRA itself, Mr. Joe Santos. And then we also have here um, members from GIDA. So we have the uh, head of GIDA, Ms. Mel Mendiola, if you could kindly come here, and Mr. Larry Tovis. We had also invited the Attorney General's office, but they informed us this morning that they are unable to attend. Um, but the committee is able to direct questions to their office, so if there are any questions that the board members or others have, uh, including senators, we can gather those questions and then pass them forward to the Attorney General's office. The general rules for the public hearing. We hope everyone present at the table has, the has had the opportunity to sign in for record keeping purposes. And the conduct of the roundtable informational briefing shall be as follows. One, as chair of the committee, I will preside and moderate and facilitate discussion 
two topics of discussion will be introduced based on the documents being reviewed. Three, discussion shall be confined to the substance. And four, when you speak, please make sure the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone and then turn it off once you are finished speaking. So everybody is seated here. It's very good to see everyone. If you could kindly start off by introducing yourselves. Uh, maybe we'll go from my right, perhaps your left, <laughs> uh, and then on down the, the table. Hi, I'm Nick Kiswani. I'm uh, on the Board of Commissioners for the Hagatnia Restoration Authority and we'll be guiding this plan forward, implementation of the plan forward, going forward from here. My name is Joseph Santos. I'm the planning staff for um, Hagania Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. Hi, Melanie Mendiola, um, uh, GIDA Administrator, CEO. Alpha A. Buenas Tardes. I am Larry Tovis, Real Property Manager at GIDA. Malik, I forgot my own rules. Okay, good. So, really, uh, as we mentioned, we want to help the Board of Commissioners especially get a baseline of information. As I mentioned, this project has been going on for 20 or more years, and so it's a lot to try to get a handle on, especially uh, they're a very engaged group. We're very excited to have them on board, and we're really looking forward to a lot of uh, good work that they will be doing as they direct the HRRA. Uh, as they all move forward. So what we're going to do is just start with uh, some real basics of understanding, and I think this will help uh, all of us just understand where we're at with the contract and some of the tasks that are at hand. So for, uh, for Gita, could you please explain the memorandum of understanding between GIDA and HRRA? Certainly. Um, thank you, Senator. The, um, the contract, the memorandum of understanding between Hagatnya Restoration and Rede uh, Redevelopment Authority and, the, and GIDA was, um, was done in 2017. And uh, primarily, uh, primarily, the MOU was uh, for the purpose of uh, GIDA strengthening the mission of HRRA in a variety of ways, um, primarily through um, the administrative support of various contracts. So as you are aware, HRRA is um, not resourced with its own um, administrative services officer, procurement officer, things along those lines. And so um, among other things, uh, among other um, things. That was one of the reasons why um, they worked with GIDA. And um, GIDA has a real property division and uh, it's being led by, currently by Larry Tovis. And so our real property division was primarily involved in um, car carrying out this MOU. And uh, the MOU was to work with, um, with HRRA in areas of identifying consultants, um, issuing RFPs, evaluating the RFPs, and um, then administering payments to the selected contractors. So that's been pri the primary uh, job of the organization <clears throat> under the MOU. This is just Masi for that. <clears throat> um, with some of the elements here, if you can provide some details to kind of update us on where we're at. So on page three of the memorandum, it said that GIDA can provide periodic updates to the HRRA executive director and the board of commissioners on the status of contracts. So if you could explain that or um, tell us if that's been done in the past and if you have some plans to do that with our newly impaneled board.
Thank you, Senator. So um, initially, when we first entered into this MOU with the uh, Hagatner Restoration Redevelopment Authority, we uh, participated in some of the earlier meetings with the uh, board of directors. Um, and so at those meetings, and there was just a couple of them that we attended, um, we gave the board members an update on where we are, were with the request for proposal and the procurement process, and then finally we got to a point where we awarded the contract and we provided information on that. Uh, after those meetings, subsequent to the, to the meetings, we then engaged with the contractor and start, finally started working on some of the deliverables. Um, but our communications was pretty much directly to HRA and the staff and the director at the time. Um, through this MOU, basically, HRA was basically and pretty much in charge of managing the, the task orders and the deliverables. Um, we were called in to actually process any invoices for those deliverables once they were submitted, uh, but we rel relied heavily on the, the uh, staff of HRA to actually manage the contract. Malik and Sidus Masi for providing that. I think, again, just this basic information is all very helpful, and uh, especially for the board of directors, they'll understand uh, how this relationship is and how it unfolds. And if you have a question, Mr. Kaswani. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. This is an interactive session, and we can ask questions to get clarification, right? Uh, the contract, the, apparently from what I've read, is the contract is between Gita and Matrix. That's and you're doing the, the contract uh, negotiation and award was on base, base. The HRRA authority is as essentially your client in, in a way. And you are the contracting authority that's implementing the contract with Matrix. Is that correct assessment? That's, that's correct. Okay, thank you. So uh, just Masi for that question. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Uh, Senator, Sato. I just wanted to clarify uh, several things. One is, uh, the HRA and Gita had actually initially done an initial MOU in 2014. Uh, from there, we agreed that we're going to go. Um, uh, we agreed that uh, in the in the MOU that Gita will go off for an RFP and uh, conduct the contract between themselves and Matrix. And Task Order One will be the first task order will be the task order to complete the master plan. Uh, we had to provide the scope of services that we wanted as a part of the overall master plan so that the board itself can, when, we, when, it, when it actually master plan is passed and all the things are done, that there's a governance associated with how the, 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 um, the master plan is going to be executed. So we originally began in 2014 and then, uh, and then amended to the contract was amended in 20, 2017, or the MOU was amended in 2017 that included the uh, Attorney General in the mix. Sidhu so Smasi for being able to provide that, uh, that additional information. So what I'm looking at right here is the 2017, and you're saying that there was an original 2014 that um, I should be adding to my files so that um, I have that comprehensive listing of the set of agreements. Yes, uh, Senator, the, the, the contract, I mean, the MOU is the same. There's no changes to the MOU. It's only the signator of the, uh, updating the signators, signatories to it and including the Attorney General in the mix. I see, thank you for providing that. And um, there's an element here where it says that Gita was to allocate an amount not to exceed, and again, this is on page three if people want to follow along, uh, item number 6A, that there was an amount that Gita is to allocate not to exceed $1 million as startup funding under this agreement, and that additional funds may be 
provided upon agreement between the GITA Board of Directors and the HRA Board of Directors. Can you provide us uh, an update of where we're at within that startup money that was part of that initial process? So, Senator, what we have is um, we have processed altogether since the start of this MOU and the contract. We've processed seven invoices for payment. The original amount of the contract was $844,732. We had an amendment, amendment number two, to add an additional 152 or just over that amount. So the total amount of this contract was $997,572. There's a balance now left with all seven invoices that have been processed and paid out of $51,174.90. Now, initially, this was approved by our respective boards, GITA board, the HRA uh, board of commissioners, uh, and uh, it was through that approval that we went through the process of procurement. Sajuismasi for that. And I want to note that uh, the speaker, Tina Munya Barnes, has been able to join us, and she is the vice chair of this committee. So we're very pleased to have her join uh, Senator Tello and uh, the board members and others that are here. Thank you. Did you have any question? Um, I realize that you're just coming in. We have only gone through the initial memorandums of agreement between GITA and HRA, and then shortly we'll be looking at the contract. We'll go so. ahead and proceed forward, uh, Madam Chair. Sujo Smaasi. Okay, so uh, let me just oops, look and see if there's uh, any last thing here within the memorandum. Is there anything that you think it, that else that's important to highlight for the board of directors to understand about the MOU or the general public? So. With the uh, scope of the contracts that was mentioned by Mr. Santos, what is the general scope of the contracts that HRA has issued or the, the contract that they're working on now? So if I may attach to the original contract and the RFP, which was issued in 2014, was the scope of services. Um, there were eight total phases of this contract. Uh, first being the update, phase one, the research and report. Uh, basically, he started off with a kickoff meeting and started uh, focusing on current future infrastructure maps, gathering of data information, uh, stakeholder interviews, and basically a summary report of, of the findings and the documents that were collected. Phase two was an update to the alternative plans, um, looking at the facility scoping, the economic market study memorandum, the alternative plans, charrette, two public workshops, presentation of alternatives to HRA board, and uh, three updated alternative plans, including the preferred alternative. Phase three, which was to commence from August through December, uh, was basically the administrative draft plan of the master plan and electronic copies, uh, a draft land use plan. Uh, we were supposed to conduct legislative hearings on appropriate district plans and then in the executive summary of the master plan was supposed to be uh, completed. Phase four, uh, between August and January of, of that following year was to establish a zoning code for Agatha, basically drafting the zoning code uh, and final zoning code uh, to be submitted. Phase five was established design guidelines and regulations draft the design guidelines and regulations, and then the final design guidelines and regulations. And that was, again, through from August through January. 
Phase six was to develop an implementation schedule uh, from September through February. Administrative draft, again, an implementation plan, electronic copy, a draft Hagatnya implementation plan, a final Hagatnya implementation plan, and then the final presentation to the HRA board. Phase seven was the Hagatnya River Flood Feasibility Evaluation, uh, which included stakeholder interviews and a feasibility study uh, from July through mid-October. The last phase was phase eight, Agania Restoration Organization Financial Construction, uh, white paper on organizational options, white paper on funding, financing, plan of action, and final presentation to HRA board. And that was to occur from March through June. Okay, so we see that there's uh, a lot of work that's involved in this contract, and we'll be able to go through some of those elements uh, in a bit. Um, and so perhaps for the board members, it's, it would be good to just know a little bit about the previous contract. So this is the ongoing contract, but there has been a contract in the past for an earlier version of the Hagatnya Master Plan. So is that the one other contract that has been worked on, or are there others for them to know about? That is correct. Prior to 2010, when we were first brought into this uh, endeavor, um, there was a contract with uh, a consultant. I believe it started in 2005 with RIM Architects. Um, am I right, Joe? Yeah. So, and uh, correct. The, it's 2003 when. The initial uh, discussion was there, negotiation, and then 2005 is when um, HRA and RIM Architects uh, did a, a contract uh, with, with, uh, with RIM Architects. Yeah. So my understanding at that point in time, again, when we were called into this uh, project, um, we had to get clearance, first of all, um, through Public Law 32, uh, the Hot Pond Law, um, 3228. Uh, it did list the Hagatnya Master Plan as one of the projects. And so we reached out to uh, the Attorney General's office to get clarification because there was already an existing contract with another consultant. We didn't know what the status of that contract was at the time. So we worked with HRA and the AG's office. And before we did anything with respect to procurement of this uh, consultant services contract, we had to make absolutely sure that, first of all, it was authorized under the Hog Bond Law. And secondly, um, with the status of the prior contractor, can we proceed with a new request for proposal? to contract a new consultant. Because at the time, it was determined that the work with that contractor had expired, the contract, and, but the work wasn't completed, so. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a real quick question. With regards to the 2005 uh, agreement between RIM Architect and a uh, HRA, uh, what was the funding source to um, pay for this? Because uh, I know that the hot bond didn't come in until uh, uh, the 30th Guam legislature, so around the 2008. So what was funding, RIM? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Senator, for the question. Um, the, um, the funding source was its own uh, enabling legislation, which is the improvements on the real estate property taxes. Uh, th that's where the money was coming from uh, in terms of uh, going out for contract. Uh, uh, you know, just to add on, on the historical perspective on, uh, on the RIM architect contract, uh, it, it did expire. The Attorney General came back and said, uh, you, you, cannot use the con you cannot extend the contract for the agreement for, for, uh, for the RIM architect contract uh, because it, it expired, so you need to set up a new contract go out for bid and this is where 
uh, Gita comes, comes into play. Now, they did, uh, one of the reasons why the contract expired is because there was no board members, or rather there were lack of board members to form a quorum to decide on the contract because the, the contract went into the latter part of uh, the Camacho administration, uh, actually um, uh, in, into the Calvo's, the first year of Calvo administration. And so it, it expired, the AG came back and saying, uh, told us that um, we have to go out for another bid. Okay. Joe, what was the amount of the um, funding source? Uh, it, you said it was through legislation um, that actually provided you the funding source uh, to, to work with RIM Architects. And how much was that funding? Or is it was there, is it, the, the, the contract arrangement was uh, 700,000. Uh, I, I need to look at the specifics of of the cost associated with it, but it was around 700,000. Uh, and the, the money where it came from or the funding source was through the enabling legislation of the Haganya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority to use the real estate property taxes. Tax within again Within, within Haganya area. Correct. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam. Sujus Masi, everyone. And that's why it's so important to have everybody at the table that's here and to have as much institutional, institutional knowledge as possible because we are, we're reaching back in time to 2003, 2005. We're talking about having worked with several sets of cons, uh, consultants and contractors. So uh, to be able to sort through that all to understand where we are today, uh, I think is very important. So I appreciate everybody being able to contribute to that. So are those the only contracts that you're aware of? There's no other, okay, good. So we've looked at that comprehensively, very good. What is uh, GITA's check issuing policy? If you could explain that for us, please. So in line with the uh, MOU and the contract, as we get these invoices, they, normally the contractor will submit an invoice for deliverables that were accomplished uh, through HRA, and then HRA will forward the invoice with a certification on the invoice for payment from HRA. We receive that invoice, we process a request, what's called a request for payment through DOA. So just for everybody's understanding, again, the account was set up through the regular process through DOA, BBMR, and so on. And uh, the account was established solely just for this uh, project as part of the total hot bonds list of projects. So it's a separate account. So you're the purse we are the purse holders. Yes, speaker. Yeah. Yes, and that's spelled out in the MOU that right. that account is going to be established. Um, the, I'll yield to the speaker, and then Thank I have you. some follow-up questions. Uh, just just based on that procedure and looking at the documentation in front of me, you looked at the task order and you gave us the master plan update on phases one through eight. And I know that there's the direct expenses and the cost and everything. I, I'm seeing a total here of eight, 844,732. Were all those expended to date? Because I see an invoice here uh, as, oh, okay. I'll, come back to that one. So I guess the question for this point in time would be, were all of, was the full 844,732 expended to date? Based on the invoices that were submitted by HRA, most of that was already and expended. And do you have any other invoices pending to be paid? Um, there's still one uh, task under, I believe it's phase seven, with respect to the Hagatnya flood evaluation, there's still a little bit of work that needs to be completed in that. And as a matter of fact, in our last discussions with the HRA, um, based on the consultant's analysis, more work needed to be done uh, as a result of conversations with uh, the Army Corps of Engineers and so on. And so, there was some talk to add some additional funding and an additional amendment to the scope for that phase so that they can complete that evaluation study of the Kanya River. Um, through that process, 
there was an appropriation made um, for, I believe it was $300,000 to assist in that endeavor. Um, however, the fee schedule that was submitted by the contractor was about 200 and some thousand over that amount. So a total of 500 some thousand to complete that study. So again, we at that point and till today are still trying to determine where we're gonna get that extra money to complete that phase. Just based on that statement, was there an approval to, to or a change order to that effect so that the increased amount for an additional almost 200,000 was allowed? It, uh, allowed? There has not been, Ms. Madam Speaker. At this point, we're still trying to negotiate that. We have not gotten a uh, full direction from HRA to proceed so, with that. But, but you're saying the work was completed? Not the work, okay. not the entire scope of that phase was not completed. So again, because of the analysis done by the consultant, additional work was required to complete that part of the, the uh, scope again. And, and so we were deliberating with the HRA to, to find some ways to fund And that's that. the river flood feasibility evaluation. Yes, ma'am. Maybe I'm going to ask somebody, excuse my naivety here, and follow through, but on phase seven, weren't we working also with the Army Corps? And uh, yeah, Madam Chair, let me, uh, and Madam Speaker, let me, let me just clarify several things. One is that the, the, we wanted to extend the contract and amend the phase seven to make it an actual, instead of uh, doing an evaluation of the study, actually do this, uh, update the study. Uh, because the, 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 the Haganya River already has a study that was done back in 1985. It requires an update of it because of the changes on, right. and who did on that the Minoldu study? River. And um, the Army Corps did the study right. uh, back in 1985. And so uh, subsequent to that, they were supposed to do the river. One of the agreements is that... They, is Army Corps, was supposed to do an update? The, no, they updated the, the, the let me, okay. they updated the, I mean, they did the study, but because the, the changes to the Menondo Bridge, the Santa Papa Bridge, and the Hagatnya Bridge, the study needed to be updated to reflect the current uh, conditions that are, that are there. So in order for the Army Corps to, um, uh, get involved in it, they, they required that the government of Guam provide, um, there was a change to what the cost would be. It was originally that we're, we were going to, it was originally that the government of Guam would provide 300,000 in terms of the study, but because of the changes on, on the, um, from the Army Corps and their policy, it went from 300,000 to 1.5 million or $3 million. And so 50% is supposed to come from the Army Corps uh, and, and the 50% comes from the government of Guam, which is 1.5 million. We, we looked at that, or the board looked at that and said, the HRA board, and said that that, uh, wow, that's kind of high. Uh, let's get a quote from the, the contractor to see if, what it would cost to update the, the, uh, the study uh, and, and go ahead and proceed with, with that. The Army, we met with the Army Corps on several occasions. They said, if you want to do the contract, they can, they can uh, uh, hire a contractor to do that relative to, to uh, um, updating the, the, the study the itself. Corps. Right, but we, we, we said that there, we can do, a, we already have an existing contract, and we already have phase seven, which is to, to do an evaluation of the Hagatnya, uh, 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 the Hagatnya River uh, study, and so we, we said, why don't we get a quote from Matrix Design Group and uh, amend that phase seven so that they can update the, the, um, uh, the, the study itself, and that will determine the course of action of what we need, how much it would cost to, to actually channelize the, the river itself. Um, and then uh, getting back to the costs that you were talking about, Madam Speaker, it, it, 
although it's a total of 100 million, I mean, a million dollars, uh, 200,000 came out of the hot bond uh, in terms of the contract, contractual arrangement. So HRE, uh, if you read the MOU, provided the 200,000 and, and then the remaining amount, uh, we, we looked at it and it says it's up to a million dollars. So it's actually a million two uh, total, total costs that, uh, that was, was there. Now in the latter part of the, once the Haganya Restoration Redevelopment Board of Commissioners got the uh, master plan and the design element and reviewed it, they said we need to go out to the public. So they amended the, the, the uh, MOU or the agreement uh, and, and, requ and required that we no do another public hearing. That last public hearing was held at the museum uh, so that we can get uh, uh, we input from And we have records of that? Pardon? Do we have a, a recording of that? Yes, we do. Yeah, yes, the, Has they, that been provided to the committee? I, I'm just trying to understand the process because I know that the last time we were here, there was talks about having money in one one area and another account, and then then the executive director, I, I know she's not here, had said that, that the information that was provided by Gita wasn't properly uh, 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 recorded. So I'm just, now that I'm looking and I'm seeing some stuff, I'm wanting to see what updates does this committee need to look at in order for us to move forward. And again, well, just, just trying to clarify yep. what you're saying and trying to put it in my brain to see, okay, if, if this was happening, so the commitment was that based on the change order, the commission approved it and that there was a... No, no uh, sorry, Madam Chair, uh, Speaker, the, in 2017, they reviewed the, the changes to the... When uh, you the, say the they, plan. go ahead and bring The, the HRE Board of Commissioners. Okay. They did a review of it and they wanted additional public input into the final draft of the HRA master plan, or the Haganya master plan. As it relates to the Haganya River? As it relates to Haganya, the master plan itself. Uh, so the, the, um, the board, the HRA board of commissioners requested from Gita to, uh, or requested from Matrix, a cost estimate of how much it would cost to actually do a full blown public uh, forum or meeting, uh, uh, including the, the final uh, draft of the master plan and the design guidelines and, of course, the map atlas. And so we made the request to the board, uh, voted and made a request to Gita, and then uh, subsequent to that, uh, this is where we did a public hearing uh, in the latter part of 2017, and, and then the, the, uh, the changes were made. Uh, accordingly, and then uh, the board met uh, and said, okay, uh, we approve the master plan, however, we need the input also, additional input or written input from the agencies of the, the ex-official agencies of the government of Guam that are part of the, the board. And has the ex-official members of the board been able to submit their findings to the uh, HRA administration or to the body? Or to yeah. the oversight chair at the time? Yes, they, they, they submitted their... Uh, uh, when you say they submitted... The who's... agencies, the ex-official agencies. And so we have all the ex-official agencies that submitted their reports to the commission and to that. Their response to the master plan, uh, the final draft of the master plan. We have it. So that includes um, entities like the Guam Preservation Trust, the Department of... Public Works. The Department of, of Public Works, the Guam uh, Department of Parks and Recreation, Department of mm -hmm. Land Management, uh, the Guam Preservation Trust, the um, Micronesia Research Center, uh, the Guam EPA. Um, I'm, I'm trying to list the agencies that are, okay. are, are part of that. But they, they did submit their response. The only one agency we didn't receive a response from was the Chamor Language Commission. And, and that was because the amendment to the the law, um, and so it was, uh, so th that was the only agency that okay. they didn't submit a response. Okay, so going back, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, sorry, so well, going back to, oh, did you want to oh, add to just, that? Just before we move yeah. on from there, this, that we have a, a language commission that's uh, uh, in place now, so 
uh, they definitely can be working with the board and with HRA and be providing their input and be serving as an ex officio member. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask a couple of clarifying questions. I think uh, we're going in a circular fashion with some of the stuff that we are discussing here. Uh, this is to, to Gita. Tasks, uh, phase seven, which has not been completed, is there, is there any amount of contract value left in that that we have not paid to Matrix? It looks like about 51,000, 51, uh, 51,174.90. What was that the amount? Was that the amount that they had put in their original proposal as the, as the amount that they would need to uh, complete that task? That's the correct. That's the original contract amount. Okay. So that, then, the, then the task score is not complete. That's correct. All, all is complete except for that item, right? That's correct. Okay. The task order is 95% uh, complete. So, which means to me, looking from where I'm looking from a technical standpoint, if the task order is not complete and the task order was supposed to develop a master plan, mm -hmm. inherently that means the master plan is not complete to the extent in which the contract is written. That's what so, I master plan is mostly complete, but there are some elements that they have to comply I, with. I'd agree with you, yes. Uh, the other question I had was uh, related to the deliverables that are listed in all the other phases. Was GIDA the recipient of those deliverables and did you certify those deliverables as having been met the requirements of the contract? No, the deliverables were certified by HRRA's executive director. So have you had several executive directors before that who were certifying that? Yes. So each, each executive director that came on board certified the task that was completed during that time and said it would, it would met the requirements of the contract and therefore you guys made the payment. That is correct. Okay. Fair enough. Understanding. I understand that part. Now, is, oh, if I can interrupt for a minute. Is that usually, um, what is it that shows that certification. Is that usually conveyed in the letter? Uh, is there a process that assures that the, the executive director or whomever is in charge, because it hasn't always been executive director, uh, that's a, a, new, a new part of how they're set up now. Um, but is there a formal process for that certification and for passing that understanding of certification on to Gita? The, um, what, I was, uh, what I learned in, in this new role is um, that, uh, well, the last time the certification was presented, so Matrix uh, presents an invoice to um, HRRA. HRRA then checks the invoice and certifies the work, issues a memo to Gita, and then Gita then uh, certifies the funds and then makes the issue or order to pay. So is there language in those memos that say that all end products have been submitted and uh, I certify that this is done to the satisfaction of the uh, HRA or? Well, uh, n not for GITA. Um, I, I would um, assert that the responsibility is on HRA and its, uh, and its board to um, keep hold the chief executive accountable for whether or not those tasks are actually being done as set forth in the, in the contract. So Joe, um, on, on HRA's end, is there a formal process where it's uh, documented that uh, someone within the office certifies that the board or the executive director or someone um, has certified that these end products are, have, met, have met the requirements of the contract? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, we, we do have, a, there's a process that's there. The board gave the authority to the executive director, whoever that may be, to go ahead and, and certify, uh, pay out the invoices, just as long as it doesn't exceed 250000 in terms of the invoice. Uh, but prior to, prior to the certification, it goes to the board, 
and then the board looks at the, the deliverables and, and, uh, and reviews it because one of the things we wanted to make sure is that, that the deliverables that are listed there are, are the actual deliverables, not just uh, somebody saying something. So uh, the, the thing goes up to the board, the board reviews it and says, yeah, this is it. And then an invoice is provided uh, from uh, once that deliverable is complete and then uh, certified by the, uh, the executive director and then submitted to, to Gita. So the process is you're outlining it. It's given to the board members. They review through it. Uh, they perhaps vote on it or uh, make some sort of motion. And then the executive director, now you're, you're using the word certify, but is there some sort of uh, form that they fill out, internal memo, or something that is actually certifying or? Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, the, 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 the um, board, the HRE Board of Commissioners approves the, that the deliverables are complete and then um, the invoice then is submitted to uh, HRA and then the uh, executive director then uh, certifies that, it, that the information is complete and then submitted to, to Gita for a payout. Um. Yeah, so again, um, uh, and sorry if I missed it, I was looking at something, um, one of the, the paperworks. But, so when you're using the term certify, I'm just trying to understand if there's a formal uh, paper or form or something that says I have certified or the board has certified, like somebody has certified and then it's like signed or something, or it's just a process. Yes, the, there is a, a, a memo that uh, is directed to Gita administrator saying that, the, that the, they have review, we have reviewed the, the, the um, phases and the deliverables and these items are complete and then submitted to, to Gita for their uh, disposition. Situ uh, I just want to be able to understand the process, and I think that will be very important for the board to know that they're role, that they're going to get a chance to review and, um, the, and so forth. Madam Ch uh, Chair, the, the board is not the approving authority or any documents that come from the contractor. The board will not be approving or should not be approving deliverables that come from the contractor. The board relies on the executive director to say that the deliverables have been met and they are in compliance. In the, in the first instance, GIDA has the technical expertise in their house to determine that the deliverable has been met. So the question I was asking earlier is, if GIDA was, rece was GIDA receiving the deliverables or was the HRRA receiving the deliverables? And whoever was receiving the de deliverables, would they do a technical assessment of the deliverables to make sure that those met the requirements of the contract? So either GIDA did that or HRIA did that to say that these phases are complete. And if they're complete, they then come to the board and say, these tasks are complete, we promise you, we certify that they're complete, and here's the invoice, and we certify they're done. And the board will say, yes, payment can proceed. Is that not? the way it has been working? Uh, 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 Commissioner um, so Sawani, uh, uh, the, the process is, as agreed upon with the MOU, is that, uh, eight, uh, let me backtrack. First of all, the GITA doesn't have the expertise in terms of reviewing the planning documents that are associated with the master plan. That's, that lies with HRA. The, so we, we review the documents, or HRE, the HRE Board of Commissioners reviews the documents based upon the staff's uh, uh, review of it and provides it to the board. The board then decides if that, if that deliverable is acceptable or not acceptable. And if that if it's acceptable, then that's when the, um, uh, the executive director then proceeds forward with submitting it to, to GITA. Now, the deliverable is also submitted to GITA in terms of what, what, they, uh, what we've received. So there's nothing, there's no, no tra there's transparency throughout the process of right. making sure that, that the, we work with Gita. Now, go back and the contract is with Matrix and Gita, but task order one is with 
uh, based upon our agreement with our MOU with GITA is with HRA and Matrix. So if, if HRA doesn't approve the deliverables that Matrix is supposed to provide, GITA will not pay them uh, out. So this is why we need to certify that the deliverables are there and, and it's acceptable to, to the uh, HRA Board of Commissioners. So, Mr. Joe, my understanding is based on the negotiations that started, it was HRRA's Board of Commissioners who approved the negotiated contract. It was approved. And then it says that GITA contract with Matrix relative to the task orders for the completion of the master plan, including the negotiated phases that's just attached. So, I guess just to answer the question is, it gets... Uh, approved by the board, right? Signed by the secretary, goes to Gita, the phase, the, 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 the breakdown is delineated, and then in that delineation, Gita is the purse holder to distribute the funds when the contract is completed. Correct. 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 Okay, and, and based oh. on that, sorry, and based on that, out of the seven projects, right? Phases. Eight projects, I'm sorry. Task. Eight yeah. phases of the task order, right? And that was just task order one. There is one phase that is not completed. Is That's that correct. safe to say? That is correct. And in that phase, so everything to date, just under, trying to understand this, Madam Chair, is completed with the exception of phase seven, which is the flood feasibility evaluation. That's correct. And that in that evaluation, there was a request to say that there's a change order that is needed because the assessment of what was attached to would have been, they were asking for an additional couple of hundred thousand dollars. Larry? That's correct, Madam Speaker. <laughs> it was solely based on the consultant's analysis of phase seven, that the initial scope of work was not going to suffice or be enough to complete that evaluation. So the Army Corps of Engineers reached out to HRA, and Joe, please step in at any time, to request that you do this full evaluation. They offered HRA, they could do it by hiring their own consultant to do the work at a price of one point some million dollars. That was the Army Corps? Correct. To hire so, their own contractors? Correct. And we so, did not agree? HRA said, no, that's too much. Right. So HRA reached out to Matrix Design Group, the consultant who's doing this master plan, hey, this is what's required now. Give us a fee schedule for that amount. How much is it gonna cost us to get this completed? So they did an analysis, they broke it down, they gave a fee, submitted a fee schedule at 500,000, which is more than half. And that still hasn't been completed to date, am right. I right? That's correct. And so based on that, their, their request, Army Corps was 1.5 million, Matrix is $500,000, but Gita only is holding the purse at- 51,000. That's right, our balance. So in the discussions about this, and this is almost a year ago when we spoke to Joe, mm -hmm. we met uh, with the acting president of DCA at the time because he oversaw HRA. And so there is a plan to utilize Funding that was available through legislation, the 300,000. But again, that's not enough. So you're short 200 some thousand. Right. So we were trying to work with HRA to determine where we were going to get that additional 200 some thousand dollars. So that's where we're at today. We're still trying to identify where we're going to get those funds. Now, I need to go back to the original inquiry with Gita from HRA. When this first took off, it was HRA didn't have the funding source to complete the plan. Despite everything that happened since 2005, 
they just didn't have any money left to complete this plan or to move forward. So they reached out to Gita. Each board, respective board, agreed Gita would fund upfront the money to complete this plan. 200,000 of that amount was already covered under the hot bond. Okay? The remaining portion, Gita fronted the money with the understanding that we would get reimbursed. And in fact, we so that have was been. That was 300,000. That was 200,000 was the first one. And then the remaining portion of the 800 some thousand would be borne by Gita up front and then get reimbursed. So that amount would allow, that would have amounted to what? Amount? $1 million is what our MOU was. And so Not to exceed $1 million. I, I believe Joe used uh, the figure of $1.2 million. So if I could just understand, is that what you meant? Has okay. there been $1.2 million spent by yeah, Gita? The, we, on the RMOU, we agreed upon that uh, Gita will front us uh, $1 million and help us to complete the master plan. But we also agreed that there's 200000 that HRA has yes. under the hot bond project. So from the one million dollars, the one million dollars does not include the the hot bond, the two hundred thousand. Right. But we agreed that we'll first use that two hundred thousand, uh, and and uh, to, to to make sure that we start off the the project the, the project itself. And so this is what we did. Now, when Gita went out to bid, there was only one bidder that provided uh, uh, that answered the RFP. However, we, uh, the HRE Board of Commissioners had requested from Gita to do an extension. They extended it for an additional 60 days to get the other uh, individuals on Guam to do a bid uh, or to submit a, uh, um, an RFP in. Uh, and the on, no, no one submitted anyone, any of the thing in. So there was only one uh, proposal that was submitted in and that went through the formal procurement process and reviewed and met all the requirements, and, uh, and uh, there you end up with where we're at now in terms of the scope of work and what we need to deliver on it. Now, in working out with, with, uh, with Matrix and Gita, we discuss what is the deliverable to the legislature and what is the deliverable to only HR, HRA and the governor uh, in, terms of the, in, in terms of that. The only one that's deliverable, that's a, a supporting, that goes to the legislature is the master plan, the design guidelines, and the map atlas. The rest of it, the board needs to make a decision on, uh, on what it needs to do with it in terms of uh, governance, in terms of uh, uh, a new uh, Title 23, we're gonna create a new Title 23 in terms of the, uh, uh, incorporating the city of Agatnya. And so those are, all those things you see there are things that it's the board that needs to make the decision on not uh, because it was given in, in its enabling legislation. And of course, we have always included the legislature in it. Uh, one of the things we requested from the get-go uh, was to, to amend the law that included the uh, mayor of Agatnya and a legislative representative uh, to, the, to the board. And so that amendment came through and uh, this is why we now have a, a legislative representative on the board and the mayor of Agatnya is included in it and that came out of the board saying we need to do this. So do spasi for those details. And before I lose the thread, I just want to get back to, and you touched on it just a little bit uh, as well right now, is it seems to me that there are uh, some processes in place that have been there maybe traditionally, but uh, we have a new board in place, I mean largely new, it's newly impaneled. And so uh, maybe one of the things that the board will be discussing is whether it makes more sense to them to have perhaps the technical expertise by the planner, by the ex officios, um, review documents to you. I mean, if we look at the board of commissioners, uh, each one has their own expertise, but it's in finances and some of the areas like that where um, up to, it's up to the board, but based on what Mr. Kaswani was saying, um, there, there may be some interest in having the technical assessment first, then the board can look at it uh, from their perspective and their expertise. So, um, again, 
not making any decisions here, but just saying that um, there may have been things traditional, but maybe the board will have some thoughts. Ma then. Madam Chair, that's already an, uh, the process is already there. Uh, when we get when we get a deliverable, we also provide it to the ex officio members uh, as a part right. of it, so they're aware of what's going on. Uh, we included other uh, members uh, of the government of Guam, uh, GPA, GWA, Port Authority, BSP. They're not part of the ex officio uh, members, but we provide them with the documentation because we, the, the HRA Board of Commissioners, needs their input into their respective expertise and their, ma their master plan and seeing if they can incorporate right. what the board has recommending in their plan itself. And, and, and so we've, and we've met with every single one of them, gave yes. them. And so I, I think you're seeing members. some of the same things, that uh, there's going to be that opportunity for technical assessment. And then I think it will be up to the board to decide um, how they're going to access that and how it will best help them. So I, I think the processes are there, uh, but the board can just be determining for itself for this term. Um, how it's going to, all those pieces of the puzzle are going to fit yeah, together. Can I ask a follow-up question just based on that? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just based on the uh, ex-officials and the membership today. Today, today uh, with HRA, how many ex-official <coughs> agencies are involved? Can you name but them? Ten? There's nine. 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 And are all those ex-official agencies being informed of the meetings that have come to play? Yes. So yes, you have notices out to all of them? Uh, e emails to every single one of them, informing them of the meeting, also getting their input into certain things that are within their area of expertise. Again, uh, uh, the reason why, one of the th reasons why the board and the legislature sees that those ex-official members are, are needed in yes. there is because each are subject matter experts and they provide right. the input into the overall plan so it becomes a full reviewed I, document. Yeah. Joe, I was just asking that because the last meeting we were at, one of the ex-official agencies had said that they have no problems giving information. They just need to be invited to the table and be informed. So I just wanted to make sure that that was provided. What, Mr. Kanata, he wanted to make sure the information that he provided when we had called him up. So he, had, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't informed of the meeting. So I just, I just wanted okay. to make sure that, I'm not so that we know that the board, the board of commissioners that are here and the office knows that all the ex-official agencies have to start being notified so that they can, and maybe even a suggestion of saying, we'll uh, have a confirmation from the office that these guys have gotten the notice and they affirm or say they're not going to come. Uh, Madam Speaker, one of the things that uh, we've done throughout every meeting is we contact the uh, eye contact person. We email every single, the board members and the, and the ex official members. They're emailed into it. Once everything is, is uh, announced and we're moving on towards that, then I call the, each individual agency representative uh, or the director itself and I, I asked them, uh, would they be available? Are they going to show up? Are they, did they receive the email? So every single one of them uh, actually uh, gets not only a, an email, but gets a, okay. a, a call from, from me okay. saying that we have this meeting. Can you make sure you attend? And so we, we're, we covered that uh, in, in terms of making sure they're okay, there. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Thank just you. And I'll, sure. I'll ask Joe what, what, what happened because... Uh, you that's know, okay. he, he, he sends, really he sends Andrew and himself to the meetings. That's, that's right, perfectly I mean, fine, Mr. Joe. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We just want to note that for the record. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, Joe Smasi, um, did you have any more questions about the contract? Just, I was going to start to go through it with um, uh, HRA like to, what to the, go through uh, the different task orders. If I may, Madam Chair, oh. I'd like to hear Mr. Kaswani uh, have an inquiry. I have one more question on the contract, and this is to, with Gita. The last m modification to the contract s stated that the contract ended in May of this year. The, la the last extension to the contract was through May, and we are now in July or June, which means the contract 
term has expired and what are we doing to extend the contract term? Is there something being done about that? And also, does that put a freeze on any additional uh, interaction with the matrix? Um, yes, sir, Director, in answer to your question, um, there was a memorandum from your executive director, Lashia Kassil, to our CEO administrator, uh, requesting for an extension of the contract, but under the condition that once the board is impaneled for their first meeting, which was supposed to take place this month, that any changes to that would be passed through a resolution of some sort or the board's motion. approval motion. So as we have it right now, sir, the contract based on that memo is current to the the month of June until your board can convene and determine where do we go from here. So you have given a letter to Matrix extending that contract to the end yes, of June? Yes, there is a letter to Matrix okay. extending that, yes. Fair enough. So Subsequent to the memo from HRA. And this was not approved by the board because we didn't have a board at that time. Right, they didn't have a board, but again, the executive director took the position yeah, that the pre I believe it was the pre we were just discussing this earlier. The previous board um, extended the contract until such time that the new board would convene. However, uh, we asked Lasha to send a memo as a kind of a back uh, another uh, layer of of um, protection for the purpose of establishing when that um, is expected to occur. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a motion of the previous board in when was that, Mr. Lair? December. Uh, there was a motion in the previous board in December to extend the contract until the board, the new board could convene and uh, decide on its extension. Um, but to further clarify and add a uh, timeline associated with that, we uh, requested a, or that there was a memo provided by um, the executive director to that effect. And one more point of clarification on, on the board of directors role in the implementation of the contract. Okay? The contract was with GIDA on behalf of HRRA. Then in that case, HRRA becomes a COTR, the contracting officer's technical representative. The board, in my opinion, the board should not be looked upon to make a decision whether the deliverables have been met or then compliance with the contractor. The board is a policy board, it's a governing body that authorize the executive director to proceed with whatever resources are necessary to execute the contract, which means that the HRRA needs to have their own technical experts or in-house experts to say this contract complies. Along with GIDA, they come, need to come to agreement and come to the board and saying this contract deliverable complies with the requirements of the contract. We've studied and we, we are therefore ready to move forward. They should not be looking to the board to say, is this acceptable? Is this task acceptable or does the task meet the requirements of the contract? Just as a point of clarification, because I don't think there are subject matter experts on the board that will be technically qualified to look at it one way or the other. I may be able to do some of that myself, but I don't think I would expect nine members of the board to be able to do that. Uh, Sujus Masi for making that point, and uh, I think that will definitely be something that the board um, has to discuss. It makes a, a lot of sense that the we're talking about a very technical set of documents. We're talking about very large impacts from those technical documents. So the more technical expertise that's weighing in, uh, certifying, assessing, reviewing, and so forth, I think the better serve the whole purpose of uh, what we're doing is served. So Sujus Masi for making that clear. With uh, these kind of board decisions, what is put into place? Uh, we've talked before about having the board minutes to, to, uh, to demonstrate board actions. Um, is there something that's in place that demonstrates uh, board approval and board actions uh, in addition to the minutes that are typically required of, of such boards? Yeah, yeah but, uh, but I'm sure we, we do record the, the minutes uh, the problem that we have is we don't have any administrative staff 
uh, to to actually help in terms of the the minutes. The way we worked it out before with the board itself is that they appointed a secretary as part of a board member, and the secretary would would just do an abstract. Uh, right. Uh, the board, not the board secretary, but the the actual HRE board commissioners. There was a treasurer and a secretary uh, appointed to the 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 uh, board itself. And that person did an abstract of the minutes and then uh, provided to the board. Yes, but Joe, I want to ask, all these meetings are recorded, am I right? Yes, they are. And you yeah. have uh, recordings of all those discs? Yes. Is it in disc or well, a USB? Or? It's, it's, on a, um, it, it's on a USB and a um, uh, okay. the recording device. So have those documentation been submitted per the Open Government Act and the recording process to the legislature, report it to the legislature on a timely matter. We were submitting it on uh, up to, I think, early part of 2017 uh, in terms of providing both the OPA and the, and the okay. legislature with the recordings of the... Well, maybe, may, let, let me ask another agency. Hold on, Joe. Gita, based on everything that you had to do as the purse string holders, were there any documentations provided to you from AHRA as, relate, as it relates to resolutions or minutes or, uh, or anything affirming or approving any of the documentation to be ordered to release any financial um, checks or anything? As, as Joe has indicated, Madam Speaker, that yes, that has been done early on, but from that period that he mentioned, without having the staff available, there has been nothing sent to us so as far then, as the minutes or resolutions passed by. So then based on you disseminating checks and all that. It's you, based on the certification of the invoice for payment. So nothing, no minutes, no nothing affirming or resolutions affirming that this could be done. It was only based on invoices. Invoices and the certification of the chief executive of the of the HRA, of a and at that time it would have been the previous director or the ASO, or was it just Mr. Santos? Madam Speaker, you are, uh, it was the executive director that would certify or sign off on the invoice itself. Now, uh, let me clarify several things. When the board was going to make a decision on something, it would get its input from, by the way, Gita attends all, almost all the meetings. So Gita is a, a party to the, the meeting that we have. And so the, when, the, when the briefing is given to the board member and the deliverable is provided uh, as a part of that briefing, the, we review that deliverable uh, to make sure that it's okay. in compliance with, with okay. whatever is requested. And uh, the, the board then ac ac accepts the Deliverable based upon planning staff. Right. Okay, I understand that. Or so, staff recommendations. So, based on information needed in order for us to move forward and facilitate, you have said everything is recorded. They're in USBs or in CDs. Do you have that accordingly right now today in your office? Yes, um, Madam Speaker, okay. we, we do have it. Wait, wait. We moved twice. Okay. <laughs> so we so need to find out I, where it's it, at. It cannot be that confusing, Joe. I'm I'm going to ask you. Only because I'm tr we are trying to move over. Sorry, Madam Chair. I want to make sure that we are literally doing right by, by making sure that we are following all the, the uh, provisions in place and statutes that we need to afford. So one of the documents that I'm asking right now, because you just said for a lack of administrative stuff, and I can attest to that because I see documentation signed by a, the board and attesting it when it really should have been at least supported by the ex executive director. I want to say what way to cover the agency would be for the actual recordings so that we can help look for the information we need so that we can follow through to apprise the new board. I want to say with the representation of this body, the 35th Guam Legislature, and the appointment of Mr. Nick Kaswani as the legislative rep is very important that they as a board get the update. And my take is in order for us to see, based on what has already been provided, these folks 
need to find out what's going on, and the chair and the vice chair need to at least try and assess where do we start from from here. Because there may be some um, issues at hand that may differ now with the new board that's impaneled and with the new legislature that's impaneled, but we want to see that do we look at the greater picture, we have to make sure that the intricacies that were already approved and provided for, that we double check and that we have that information. So we're all on the same page, are we right? So I think I'm going to ask Madam Chair for a timeline. This has been requested for five months because I know that I've requested of the oversight, I've requested in several meetings, I've requested to you yourself before we had, uh, before you facilitated and impaneled the full board. Do, can we have a copy of those USBs? You know, but yes, uh, yes you can. I just need to look at it. Okay. I just got back from a, uh, is medical. there anybody else that can help look you, help you look for it? Well, uh, hire somebody because no, uh, no, no, we, I'm not asking to hire. Is somebody. there anybody that can yeah. help? Because we can ask to detail. I, I believe when I was at the informational hearing the other night on the 18th, you held up a USB, and so my understanding was at that meeting that you have found it. Yes, we were. I was looking through the the boxes of, yeah. of stuff right. because so when at, the thing was moved. As of at least the 18th, you've right. had that. And Excuse there me. has been a, a letter, um, the speaker has mentioned that in February in earlier meetings, we've asked for those minutes. It's now four months later. Uh, it's perhaps a year and a half since those meetings. And um, I've submitted a letter asking for those minutes by today. So. Um, Anyways, uh, we will continue working with you because those minutes, it's, it's part of the open government law. And so for transparency of everybody uh, and to make sure everything's done well, the board is getting what it needs. Um, you're getting the confirmation that you need uh, and documentation that we just are ensuring all of that's yeah, but Madam going Chair, to happen. I just wanted to clarify. One is the master plan and the design guidelines that you have has never has not been officially transmitted to the legislature because the law requires that it be transmitted officially with the governor's signature in bill form to the legislative secretary. What we what HRA was trying to do because we have new legislative uh, individuals there is to provide you a courtesy copy so that uh, you, you as the chair can review the the documentation and say okay yeah this is it uh, and so when you're reviewing that. You're, you're reviewing it based upon uh, us working together. The other thing is that the policy well, of the executive branch right now- We also downloaded it off the website because it's been available there right. for years. Yeah, so, so, although it's not there right now, so but the, we'll ask the, that in the, a bit. The current policy of this uh, administration is let's go back, let's give the agencies another review of it, and, and let's get to the, the, uh, the impaneled new board members and brief them on, on the master plan and the documents associated with, with, with it so that they can reapprove it or make, make appropriate changes to well, the master plan. They can work on it to their satisfaction and, and to move forward as they see fit. Um, and part of why we're asking for those minutes, as we've talked about, is to verify that there was approval to verify the difference between the February 2018 approval that we heard of and then the August 2018 version of the booklet. But we will continue that further. Um, what we're all trying to do, yourself included, I'm sure, is we just want to make sure everything's in place. The board of directors have, uh, commissioners, sorry, what they, they need to move forward and uh, we all get to see some good movement what I wanted to do next is just to go through the task orders, uh, task order one, and uh, just verify where we are. So um, what I have is what is listed as, I think, exhibit A in the contract. It's quite a large contract. Um, before I do that, I had wanted to ask uh, Gita 
if you could explain what an IDIQ type of contract is, uh, that's very important since that is this type of contract. So IDIQ contract is uh, indefinite deliverable, indefinite quantity. So basically what that allows the agency to do is if there are multiple taskings for various projects, um, through the procurement process, uh, you hire a consultant with, under this IDIQ uh, with the understanding that it's, it's basically an open-ended contract based on task orders. So as these task orders are being issued to the contract, you'll have various timelines for completions. Uh, obviously, you're going to have different fee schedules for each task order. This is not an attempt to avoid any procurement of any services. It's the whole idea behind this is if you have multiple taskings that are at your desk to, to complete, then it's just easier to have one contractor complete those projects as opposed to going out with 17 different RFPs for 17, 17 different task orders. And uh, it seems to me that it's a way of dealing with a very complex yes. um, set of work. Yes. It's a way of having to be organized and having a timeline. Uh, when you were going over the scope of work earlier, you were talking about the timeline. So it's a way of creating some organization um, to a very complex scope of work, uh, right. it seems to me. So I, I understand and I appreciate the way that you've explained it. And I, I think that's very helpful for those of us who are not <laughs> familiar with IDIQ contracts. Right. And it goes through the, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, it goes through the proper review process, the Attorney General's office, our legal counsels. So everything is above board with respect to that. Madam Speaker, the, the IDIQ contract, the format for the IDIQ contract is very commonplace in the industry. It allows, uh, uh, it allows us to place a technical contract based upon the technical qualifications of the contractor who can do multiple types of work, for example, an engineering work, right? So if, they, if it allows us the ability to issue task orders, Within the IDIQ contract, you can issue one or multiple as your needs dictate, and that allows you to quickly move forward rather than go through an entire procurement process every time you need to do something small. So this, in, in this case, the IDIQ contract was set up to enable GITA and uh, Matrix to work together on multiple tasks. The first task was task order one, which was to support HRRA. They can have other tasks to support some other agencies or even to support HRRA. So that's the reason why, why we set up IDIQ contracts. They are a very efficient vehicle to move the, move the work forward. The, the only thing that I could rec recommend is as we, as we go forward in setting up these contracts that we try to not address the tasks as subtasks within the contract. So task order one, for example, has tasks for 1.1, 1.2, 6.1, 7.1, because it confuses the, the people reading the end product. You can call them, you know, subtask one within the task order. So if you just do that little change, it'll allow our legislative body and the board of directors also to make clear that when you're talking about task order 1.1, it's not task order one. It's subtask within the task order. Or you task or talking about task, task uh, 6.5, it's, it's not task order 6, it's still task order 1. That's the clarification that I would propose going forward. And that's a good point. It has been a little confusing. And uh, you also bring the point that there are other tasks to this contract, uh, even though the, the Hagatnya master plan itself is very complex with many phases to it and then many subtasks to it. Uh, it's actually only task order one of a multi-task ordered uh, contract. So what I'd like to do is just to clarify where we are in all of our 
phases and subtasks. I'll try to refer to them as subtasks. Um, so with Joe, phase one, the update, the phase one research report. Uh, to your knowledge, where are we in phase one? Um, Madam Chair, phase one, two, and three are actually taking the original contract with, um, with, um, Trying to think of the name uh, from Rim Architects. R Rim Architects, <laughs> and and uh, updating it, making sure that they included uh, on the thing. One of the things we, in reviewing the original uh, documents that were submitted by Rim Architects, is that they didn't include previous approvals of of plans that the Seizure Protection Commission and the Land Use Commission had approved, or what the legislature had uh, in terms of providing a law to do certain things. And so we wanted that included in there. And the, uh, so phase one, two, and three are actually uh, more informational gathering and more updating of the, the original documents that were submitted by RIM Architects. So Jus Mahasi, and again, I think that helps bring clarity for everybody uh, exactly what the goals were. And when we use the word update, what we're referring to that we're updating that previous master plan and including some additional elements. So where are we with phase one in that updating? Uh, how complete are we with that? That's, um, Madam Chair, that's uh, complete. That is uh, a result of, the, that's the map atlas that, you, that uh, you guys have a copy of. Okay, so phase one is the map atlas. Right. And uh, so, with the kickoff, uh, kickoff meeting that occurred, the public participation program that took place, uh, the stakeholder interviews. Oh, one of the things that I wanted to ask about with the project website. So I was just looking at the website again this morning and it has vastly changed. It's now on WordPress. Uh, with the project website, can you explain to me a little bit of the, or not a little bit, but can you explain to me the process between that which is listed here under subtask 1.3 in project website and where it's at today? You're, Madam Chair, you're talking about task 1.3 data collection, right? 1.2, sorry. I read 1.3, but it is actually above that in 1.2 uh, on page two though. Yeah, but I'm sure in the pu public participation program, uh, one of the things we wanted to make sure we did was how do we go about selling uh, the Haganya restoration and redevelopment and the master plan. So this is why you see as part of the, the tasking is develop a project brand and then developing certain websites to, or certain sites to, to get the public involved in it. Uh, when they did the, the, uh, the public participation program, we had several charrettes associated with that, bringing uh, the different prop uh, components together from the government agency, the original the landowners, the businesses, and the, the other interested parties into the, the charrette. I, I think the charrette took a total of four days in terms of uh, completing the project and was held at the Tarahi building? Oh, I, I can read this for you. I'm not sure if you have it right before you, but we could get a copy of it. Where it says here, so that we're both on the same page, Matrix will review and assess HRRA's existing website and provide recommendations on improvements to increase public awareness and input. Matrix creates project websites for almost every project that we conduct and are familiar and experienced in how to create appealing and easy to use websites to inform the public and allow them opportunities to participate in the process. So in the months of this year uh, that I've been oversight chair, I've visited the project website very, uh, quite a few times. And I noticed today when I went on the website that it's a completely different website and it's now in WordPress. So um, I 
looking for explanation, explanation as to what happened with this, what I'm, uh, may have been the website that Matrix helped worked on and with the website that seems to be up today. If you could just explain the difference between the two or how it came to be. Yeah, but Madam Chair, on the, on the project website, uh, one of the things that the board agreed with, uh, we, we set up a Facebook page, but we also set up a, an actual website that, that the board will take over from there in terms of updating. Matrix will, will do that project web, website. Uh, one of the things we wanted to make sure that was done was that we are in compliance with the government's IT requirement, and Matrix is supposed to get with uh, the IT uh, which is OTEC, to make sure that whatever documents we have on there, that the, the website will be transferable to the, the, the government's uh, requirement for, uh, right. for the website. So that hasn't been submitted yet, Joe? The, the, the project website is, uh, is, is there. It's called the Haganya Master Plan. It's not the uh, Haganya Restoration and Redevelopment uh, Authority. Uh, Authority site. We've been working with uh, OTEC, which is uh, Galati Group and NextGen to establish a website for the, for the <coughs> HRA because we're not funded to, to actually do an actual official uh, website. And so we've been working with them to, to actually do the, the site. I don't know if they've done one. Uh, we worked it where we did a Facebook page and we were trying to get on Twitter and, and other uh, types of... Uh, of uh, of, of uh, public uh, participation uh, sites. I, I hope that answers your question. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm not seeing it, but I'll continue to look for the website. So maybe, maybe uh, this is it that I'm pulling up. So they did provide some assessment for you uh, as listed here in the, the task order. They provided guidance and assessment for the website? Yes, yes they did. Okay, yes, and then you have that documentation? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you for clearing that up because uh, in looking at the WordPress, I, I did get a little confused, so I, it's good to be, have that be clear. Okay, for task, uh, Subtask 1.3, the data collection um, and the base mapping in subtask 1.4, the subtask 1.5 development constraints and opportunities, uh, the subtask 1.6, uh, the summary report, all of those have been conducted, Joe? Yes, yes, uh, yes, ma'am. They, they've been conducted in terms of the base mapping. Uh, the map atlas, that's what the document's called, is the one that has all the information there. We also have the uh, electronic version of it, and one of the things we require of Matrix is to make sure it's in, uh, in a shape file or, or using ArcGIS as the, as the platform to uh, have the, the information available. And it mentions here deliverable. So is there a system, if you could describe the system that you have for keeping the deliverables in an identifiable place? And then again, as oversight chair, uh, I'd like to request a copy of the deliverables uh, such as the ones that, that uh, like the, the map, uh, the summary report of the findings and the updated research report and so as we go through the different deliverables if I can just get copies of each of those so that we have as comprehensive a, a set of items okay. as possible. But do, uh, can you explain how you keep the deliverables in an identifiable place well, or manner? Uh, we, uh, by the grace of, uh, of BSP, BSP provided us with, a, with, a, with the updated uh, ArcGIS and we've set up files associated with that worked with other government agencies to get their shape files and set it up as a, as a thing. Now, publishing it in, the, in, a, in a website, that's, that's a problem where people can access that, that information. Uh, and, and so that's why you, you see it in the map atlas format. 
Uh, now, we do have electronic uh, version of the public buildings map for Hagatnya, the, the um, current and future anticipated infrastructure maps, and we base that upon the different agencies that are, like for instance, GWA, GPA. Um, so we, we do have the, uh, that information and, and uh, we can provide it to you if, you if you need it, if you request it for it. It's, an art, it's in a shape file. Okay, and uh, I, 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 do, uh, I do think it's good for the oversight chair uh, to have a copy of the different deliverables that are able to be transmitted, such as maps and uh, findings and reports. So are these kept on a laptop? Are they, uh, do you make uh, copies of them on CDs so that they're somewhere safe and guarded? Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am, uh, we, we do have it. As a matter of fact, I had to go personally purchase uh, a external drive to make sure we have that available, and I made, made redundancy to it, so there are several, three uh, external drives that we have the, the information in, and as we go along, we update the, as we update the, the different electronic uh, copies, we, I, I try to provide it to the different uh, uh, I mean, uh, external drives that we have. Okay, so oh, with that, if can I we can be also, sorry, sorry. Uh, just recommend um, having it in the cloud as well because we never know when something's going to happen uh, physically, yeah. and all hard drives do cache at some point. Yeah. So, uh, possibly Madam in the Chair, cloud again, as well. uh, we repeat, I'm the only staff there. Yeah. Uh, and so, if we get assistance uh, for. Okay. Years since I've been in HRE, where they, when I transferred, we've been requesting for positions in order to yeah. to make sure that we function as an uh, uh, in our responsibility in terms of staffing the uh, the yes. board of commissioners. But I'm the only staff there. Yes, I, yeah. and we understand that. So in our efforts, based on what you just shared to the chair about having the external drives and everything's already in there, is there any way that can be? Um, Airdropped or transferred to a to a hard disk or a floppy or something, a USB that we can be able to work with. Y yes, ma'am. And and again, again, Joe, timeline. What are we looking at? So if if the support is needed, we don't. You know what? I'll even offer to see what we can do to assist in getting the information transferred. So, so we don't have the money to. For a thumb drive, or we don't have the the resource. If you, if I can, we get I can the thumb drive and the USB, yes, I, I, I will. I'd be more than glad to work closely. Right. With so, you. so if every one of the agencies, when they request or somebody requests yes. for an electronic copy, we said provide us with. Uh, yes, and we'll we'll provide that to you. Okay, great, and I'll I'll provide the information to you. Thank you. May, so just Marcy, there's yes. always a solution. Yeah. <laughs> may I make a comment so, here? And uh, yes, and and. Um, uh, just any deliverables uh, should go through the speaker's office, so uh, I can work on the speaker with that, and then anytime you guys are dropping that off, to just firmly no, submit it through there. Madam Chair, real yeah. quick, um, remember that although we're working hand in hand, um, uh, are we officially transmitting it to the legislature, or are we working with the legislature in terms well, right of Right now we're working with the committee. This is a committee right. hearing, and we're each other's chairs. But Maybe the other question I'd like to ask, Madam Chair, since Matrix has been the one handling this, maybe uh, we, uh, we maybe should ask just them. ask Matrix for everything that they have so that the new board that's impaneled could be able to be given an update, not just a summary update, but a more thorough, uh, detailed analysis of what is done. Because really, for record keeping, we should have a, a delineation of what, what has been transpired transpired during the times. So, yes, Mr. Kaswani. That is where I was headed. Thank you know, you, it, it, it seems like they have given us electronic copies of deliverables piecemeal when they finish them. And the deliverables have been given in either electronic format on CD drives or thumb drives or whatever, and they are not in a centralized location, as I understand, uh, the, in the, the database. They are in a centralized location at H, the HRA office, it's no, no. just that we're not. No. When I say centralized location, I'm talking about an elect, electronic centralized location where somebody can see as a result, the end deliverable 
have was delivered, and yes. that deliverable is not is in electronic format, but it's not visible to the public, legislature, or the board of directors. Okay. So what I'm going to suggest to resolve that issue, since we have the problem and they don't have staffing, HRRA does not have the staffing, include that as a task order addition to HRRAs when we negotiate the task order seven extension or whenever we do that, find some money, negotiate that in there, let them build the website for us and keep all the data in one place. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Kiswani. That, that is really, really a very good uh, solution. More importantly, as we look at following the statute of what is in place today for our government's accountability and transparency, yeah. that should have already been adhered to. So again, just again, working with the committee, uh, we will, will provide whatever necessary so that our committee could be able, and I want to thank the Madam Chair for at least allowing us that opportunity so that we can continue to work together. Um, it, it is very important and crucial that as much as the money that has been expended out, that we have a tangible, hard copy and, and a complete, detailed, um, transparent, portfolio and report moving forward so that because it should be open to the, the public and that should be transmitted through what is stated in statute today. So I really want to say that I really appreciate that recommendation and I want you to know, Joe, that, that we will provide that, at least that capability and then work on it so that the, at least the committee can have it from our side and when the Board of Commissioners impanel their first meeting, that we can also uh, r remind them that that should be a part of the agenda to facilitate how they should work that process moving forward based on statute. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. It's to Joe Smasi for that. And um, so to get back to the question that you were mentioning, that um, anytime anything is officially submitted uh, to the senators, it should go through the speaker's office, and then it's well, it's uh, official correspondence. By and law, the, it, it needs to go to the legislative secretary. Um, Ooh, where'd she go? <laughs> it, it has to go to the legislative secretary, who then provides it to whoever it's supposed to go to, because the the receipt has to be from officially from the legislative secretary. That's what I was asking you: Is this official? Are we working? together as, as well, a, and as in your, that way there's that chair. formal documentation it has indeed been submitted it has indeed been received so I think that's uh, very good and then it becomes uh, part of the record that record. you've uh, provided these things and we've received them so I think that's all very good okay and so going with uh, phase two if we look at the deliverables uh, the facility scoping memorandum the economic market study memorandum, alternative plans, charrette, as you were mentioning, two public workshops, a presentation of alternatives to HRA Board of Commissioners as handouts, three updated alternative plans, including the preferred alternative. You have copies of all of these then? Yes. Malik. And for phase three, update the land use plan. So with that, um, there was a section here on page nine, subtask 3.5 legislative hearings. Were those able to take place? It mentions uh, they will support the hearing process with the legislature by attending up to two hearings on the proposed district plans and uh, requiring legislative review. Did that process occur? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, we, we briefed. Um um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, I know that we gave a briefing, actually two briefings. One is to uh, the committee, the oversight co committee, and uh, of course Senator Cruz was there, Senator Respichu. As a matter of fact, the speaker was, was uh, included uh, in was, that meeting. Was that when it was uh, under the oversight of former Speaker Cruz? Uh, yes, okay. yes ma'am. And uh, as a matter of fact, it, uh, the Two of the hearings were located at the old, uh, at the old legislative uh, public hearing room. That helps us date it a bit. Uh, do you recall, I know you have very good recall. <laughs> do you recall the year uh, that that was? You know, I have to look. 
uh, we, I do have a listing of, of the events that occurred, kind of like a, an abstract. I need to look at that as to when that, that occurred, but we did, okay. uh, it was Matrix that did the briefing mm -hmm. uh, to, to the legislature. We, we came in as, as providing input to, uh, uh, you know, what, what the, any question that the legislature may have of the board. Uh, so the, the chairman was, uh, the chairman and the vice chair were heavily involved in a, a lot of the coordination measures that were occurring. Okay, and then in the uh, subtask 3.6, it says, based on comments received from the legislature and the HRRA direction, Matrix will provide appropriate revisions and provide a final version. So uh, to your knowledge, they incorporated the comments from the legislature that was in place at that time. Uh, this was prior to the final Haganya ma ma Master Plan. But yes, every input that was considered or looked at was looked at to see if if, uh, if that, if there was a, it was covered in the master plan, if it wasn't covered in the master plan, uh, how do we go about making sure it's a policy of, of, the, of the plan itself? And, uh, and yes, we, we incorporated a lot of the information uh, into, uh, into the, the final draft of the master plan. <coughs> Very good. And for phase four, establish a zoning code for Hagatnya. So at the informational hearing that we were at on June 18th, so just a couple of nights ago, you were saying that this is 70 to 80% complete uh, for establishing a zoning code? Actually, the zoning code is, is, is um, like almost 100% complete. Uh, okay. I, so I, actually, I have a copy of it here and, oh, uh, and the and like. electronic version. But because it hasn't been uh, reviewed by the, the HRE Board of Commissioners or uh, input provided to the Board of Commissioners, uh, we, we haven't released it because it's not a, it's a, uh, it's a uh, working document, not a um, thing. And, and you know, we're, uh, we have it as, as a final draft as to how the zoning code will be based upon <coughs> the master plan, the final master plan. So just Masi for explaining that. So, <clears throat> um, so that's still going through its uh, final subtask phases. Uh, let's see. So in this zoning code, <clears throat> it also mentions that there are to be some legislative hearings. So uh, those are still to be scheduled as well. Uh, in on page ten, subtask four point two. Madam Chair, we, we, that was a part of the, some of the briefings that were given to the, to the, uh, the chair of the legislature uh, at the time, the oversight chair, where they gave the briefing as to where they're at in terms of the zoning code. Okay, so... So the, the, when you look at the, the project, just don't look at the, the task as, as one thing because, they're, they're, because there's multiple subject matter uh, areas within it. Uh, we had to make sure that we gave the... Uh, the legislature, the full briefing on, or rather the, the chair the, and the committee, the full briefing on the different products that were coming along. Okay, so here it's saying uh, in subtask 4.3 that based on comments received from the legislature, so have those earlier sets of comments already been incorporated and you said that right now you're waiting for the review by the the newly impaneled HRRA Board of Directors uh, to also be incorporated for it to be 100% complete. Uh, correct. If the, if the board doesn't approve it, then we can't send it out as the, an official documentation. Uh, we we, we want to we wanna be able to send that out, but the board needs to be the one to approve the, the zoning plan or accept the zoning code and the master plan uh, as, as it is and then move forward from there to making sure that uh, the full review is given and uh, it's approved. Now, if you read the law dealing with, uh, with the Hagatnya, uh, uh, the HRA, uh, the, in order for us to approve the, plan, uh, the zoning code, the master plan first needs to be approved. And so uh, we're waiting, 
before the zoning code can go into effect, oh. the master plan needs to be approved first. I see. So there's an order to these things. So um, it's in progress because it's waiting on the review by HRA, the Board of Commissioners, and then um, upon the approval of so there are at least a couple of stages there, and then those things will be incorporated into the final. So for here, for the deliverables, what has been submitted, submitted thus far is the draft zoning code. Um, Madam Chair, it's the final draft zoning code, or the final zoning code that was delivered to, uh, we reviewed it, uh, got our input, land management, uh, came into the, the what's a part of the mix, uh, EPA uh, and some other uh, agencies dealing with land uses were included in the in the review process, and so um, uh, they provided the final working draft because in order for them to put the final code, it needs to be first brought up to the the um, HRA board of commissioners for their uh, acceptance. Okay, and if you. Uh Please remind me what you were saying. You were saying this is about, all in all, phase four is about 90% done? Is that what you were saying? The, the task for matrix is 100% complete. The task for HRA hasn't been completed yet, where it goes to the board of commissioners for, for its acceptance. Okay, so the final zoning code, because um, it doesn't say final working draft of the zoning code, it does say final, and that it incorporates the comments. So um, can you explain, I mean, why it says final here, and you're actually referring to it as final working draft? Well, uh, the reason why, uh, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm uh, saying it's a final draft is because it hasn't been accepted or approved by the, the HR Board of Commissioners. If it hasn't been accepted or approved, it's still in a draft format. Again, when you look at the law dealing with, uh, with uh, documents, if it becomes accepted already and approved, then uh, it becomes a public document. Right now, if it's a working draft, it doesn't become a public document. It's a work in progress and it's not released to the, the public if the public uh, is requesting for, for a copy of it. And if the board does actually have some comments, how do you how will that process go? Like how will that, if, if the board, rather than just approving it, they have actually some revisions to recommend, um, can you explain that process? Well, one of the things, see, uh, Matrix is supposed to be still a part of uh, our, our, uh, uh, our working group in terms of doing that. A lot of this is supposed to already have happened before the task order is completed, but that, that hasn't happened because of the timeline between the, the original, uh, from the time that Matrix began uh, phase one to, to uh, the completion of phase eight. Uh, HRA has been going through a lot of um, um, issues that, where the board either hasn't met or hasn't uh, moved forward in terms of approving the, the plan that's, that's there. They've been briefed on it by Matrix and given a, an in-depth review, but not, uh, the board hasn't uh, approved the final for e uh, each of the documents or the deliverables that you're, you're talking about. So when you're saying uh, they haven't approved each of the deliverables, you're just talking about for phase four or for? For fa phase four, the, 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 this is why it's called a final working draft. Uh, once the, the, the changes have, have occurred uh, or added in or amended, then it becomes the, the final uh, zoning code. Okay, then it will become the final zoning code. Uh, did they turn in, did they submit 10 copies, an electronic copy of this final working draft? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, this, this is one copy here uh, that, that I have. Um, but I do have it in electronic format also. Malik. Okay, so we're on to phase five. Establish design guidelines and regulations. Um, and so with that one, we have, 
Well, that one ends up being pretty short. It doesn't take too long to go through. We have the draft design guidelines. We have the final design guidelines as subtasks 5.1 and 5.2. Um, and so both of those have been provided as deliverables, the draft design guidelines, regulations, the final design guidelines and regulations. Yes, ma'am, I, I have it right here. Right, and yeah. uh, those ones have been reviewed by the HRA board when they were in place from before. Yeah, yes, ma'am, this is why it's final. Um, it's a final uh, a document final, final. that's gonna be submitted with the yeah. master plan and the map atlas to the legislature. And phase six, uh, develop an implementation schedule. So with phase six, uh, your understanding this is 100% complete? Yes, yes ma'am. Again, uh, in the, when we talk about the implements, uh, implement, implementation schedule, it's dealing with uh, what actions need to occur. And there is a white paper on, on, uh, on this because Again, the board needs to say that this is going to occur, or this is what uh, this is the, the things that need to occur in order to make sure that the master plan is executed. Very good. And so, with the deliverables, um, subtask six point four. This perhaps applied to the earlier board, but uh, Matrix provided a presentation to the HRRA board over the master plan update, uh, the phase two part, and so forth, as outlined here on page 13, they provided that presentation? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. They gave a presentation to the board as to uh, what the implementation schedules would be, and the board needs to say, are we gonna proceed forward with this or not? Um, they, they, they were presented with it, but they didn't make a decision, the board didn't make a decision on that. Okay, so that's something that's still pending. That's pending only with HRA, not with Matrix. Matrix right. has done their, their okay, role. Okay, they get provided their presentation. Right. Um, do you have an idea, since we have a newly impaneled board, how they will be able to access that presentation? Is that something Matrix left with you, perhaps? Uh, yes, yeah, we, we, do, we have everything that's deliverables that are, that are there. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do, and I, I mentioned it at the, the informational meeting at, at, uh, at GITA conference room is that uh, one of the things that's required by, by law is that the board needs to be, uh, go to a certification that they've, they, they, were, they were briefed on uh, the different things dealing with what a board and commission is supposed to do and then their, their specific role of what the board, the HRE board of commissioners is responsible for. So we're, we're waiting for the uh, HRA board of commissioners to give us a date uh, when they can uh, meet so that we can announce it and uh, we wanted to incorporate both the uh, the briefing and and uh, and the the information associated with that so there's a lot of documents that we will prov be providing the HRA board of commissioners when we give them the briefing as to their authority every one of them will include the deliverables uh, that are associated with, with, uh, with what we have in terms of task order one. Okay, great. So they will get a com comprehensive set of deliverables and then that will allow them to be able to go through whatever they feel that they need to. Yes, yes ma'am. The, the, the thing that you're doing is the same thing we will be doing to the HRE Board of Commissioners. And uh, that final presentation, now it says meeting handouts, but you have a copy of the presentation. I'm assuming perhaps it's a PowerPoint or something. Uh, yeah, well, I do have through. an electronic copy of it. I can okay. provide it to you. Okay. Well, and uh, I was thinking mostly about wanting to make sure the board uh, had access to it or you could be utilizing it, but absolutely a, a copy would be very useful. And so we get to uh, phase seven which is the area. Uh, can you explain how far along we are in the process and which parts of the subtasks that have been done? Um, if you, I think you have the copy, right, great. So you're on the same page. So yeah. starting with page 13, if you could let us know at what percentage we are in phase seven and uh, which parts have actually been done and paid for. Since the inception of the task order 
uh, task order one we've been in uh, matrix and uh, and the army corps honolulu district has been in contact with each other to include the hra to see what how we can move forward relative to to the uh, the uh, what what do we need to do to update the the move forward in terms of channeling, channelizing the, the river so that we can reduce the floodway. Uh, the if, proponent- If that ends up being the study recommendation, correct? Right, the, the proponent is, uh, is the Department of Public Works. Uh, one of the things that made the, the, that requires that the, the study be updated, or the ma it's, called the, it's called the Haganya River Flood Management uh, Study. Uh, update the reason why that has to be done is because the 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 Aganya River or Aganya River River Aganya Bridge River Bridge the Santa Papa Bridge and the Menondo Bridge have been um, have been modified and so they have to be included as part of it and of course uh, DPW who's the proponent was supposed to submit that to FEMA so they can update the firm maps associated with with the update of the bridges uh, Right now, uh, in our discussion with FEMA, that hasn't occurred. So they're asking for, for an, uh, an update of that. Part of that will be included in the, in the feasibility, uh, in the, in the update, study update. Now, uh, I, I, on the meeting, I provided a, a chart showing the Army Corps of, of Engineers process. Right. So. Uh, since we're going through the contract, because um, we are going to have more time to talk about that, and I think it's something uh, a whole lot of people are interested in, um, if we're just looking at how complete we are in the contract, for subtask 7.1, um, has the data collection been carried out? Uh, the, the raw data or the data that needs to substantiate the study or up updating the study has been collected has been collected. But and it hasn't been uh, gelled together to form an actual summary, a, a summary report or an actual report because, right. because that, that's not what uh, Matrix was hired to do relative right. to this and the, phase. The data collection is its own subtask. And then uh, with the subtask 7.2, the stakeholder interviews, have those already occurred as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so are there any other subtasks that have occurred? Um, uh, making it about 30% complete, or is th are there other elements of the subtask that have been completed also? Um, uh, confirm improvement performance, confirm costs, funding options. 7.4 7 mm -hmm. um, and 7.6 will not be completed until the study is complete. Uh, and the reason why is because the, the study will indicate different alternative courses of action, and that has to be selected by the government of Guam as to what that alternative courses of action uh, ha have, uh, are. Now, one of the things that we wanted to do was make sure that we establish a promenade within the, within the Haganya River so it can be used as part of the thing, and that's included in the master plan. So we have to make okay. sure the master plan gels with the with what we're doing in terms of the courses of action that, that's uh, happening now. Originally, it was 750,000. Half of that was supposed to be uh, HRA and, or rather the government of Guam and, uh, um, okay. and, and the Army Corps. Right. But that so, ballooned out to- So as far as subtasks, sorry, I'm not meaning to cut you off, but just as far as, far as the subtasks, so uh, perhaps everything uh, except for 7.4 and subtask 7.6 have been done. Have the stake uh, for the deliverables, have the stakeholder interviews been transmitted uh, or has there just been the action and none of the deliverables have been submitted I, yet? Actually, uh, Senator, I, uh, a lot of the information's in here. Uh, even okay, the so I'm asking interview. you so, so the general public can hear and the so, board of commissioners can So we, we do can have hear. it, I, I can provide it to you in terms of uh, what what have we been communicating, even the emails that we've been communicating with the Army Corps of Engineers. Okay. This is one so, of the reasons why we... Yeah, is that a yes to yeah. the stakeholder interview? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> That's all I wanted. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it simple. <laughs> uh, and then on phase eight, 
Uh, this one, uh, the Hagatnir Restoration Organizational and Financial Construct, I believe um, this includes uh, deliverables, uh, the plan of action, like a implementation plan of action, correct? So these have all been delivered. The white paper on organizational options, the white paper on funding, financing, the plan of action, and the final presentation to the HRA board, those have all occurred uh, and yeah, been yes. delivered. Uh, here's the, the organizational uh, uh, white paper, structure white paper, but it, it includes within it uh, the funding source associated with, with uh, what the board can do. Plus uh, the proposed legislation associated with uh, the organizational structure. Okay, so um, so all of those have been submitted, and then uh, the speaker and I, who's vice chair, can work with you on getting the electronic copies. And it's good to hear that the board of commissioners will get all of the deliverables as well. They'll be able to get electronic copies of all of these. So, um, okay. So I think that gets us to understanding largely where we are with the contract. Um, so one of the other things that we wanted to discuss before we finalize and leave is the invoice that was submitted the other day. Um, now, when I was at the informational hearing we went through quite a listing of uh, what had happened on almost a day-to-day -day basis, but I didn't see in here the listing of the paying out of this invoice. So with this, um, do you, did you get a copy of the um, invoice? Let me, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what invoice, is that the latest invoice? Yes. Okay. I, I, I'm not a. Um, oh. And I realize also you've uh, been out, but anyways, it wasn't listed uh, or mentioned I, at the informational hearing. But but uh, on April seventeenth, there was a memorandum that says uh, it requests that uh, this invoice be attached. Oh, do you have a copy? Oh, okay. yes. That the invoice attached be paid out. So um, can you explain that process? Um, did it go through that process that you guys have been outlining that uh, the end products were reviewed and everything was certified as complete uh, and so forth? Um, you know, I, I wasn't here when um, when uh, I was on a medical medical leave. Uh, in terms of the uh, what what I don't know if it's been paid out or what has happened. I know that the executive director um, had requested from Gita. Gita can probably speak to that portion. Yes, <laughs> you've been very patiently sitting here, and so I apologize for the length of time. But uh, if you could um, answer Mr. Santos's uh, question. Okay, so as indicated in the letter or the memorandum on April 17, the executive director wrote to our uh, CEO um, requesting for invoice 25064 in the amount of $196,297.20 to be processed. And so with that and the attached invoice, we proceeded to process the invoice along with the progress report that was attached to it. Okay, and so we have listed here um, some of the different phases being finalized that the Phase seven is at 30% according to their assessments. Mm -hmm. uh, that there was a payment request for printing materials and other mi miscellaneous materials. 
associated with their work. And that, um, is this, Joe, can you explain, is, is the amendment to, is that what you were referring to earlier, additional engagement activities? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, the, on, the, on the public, one of the things the HRA Board of Commissioners wanted to do was make sure um, when they received the final master plan and, the, and everything associated with that, they wanted to make sure that, that we had an additional uh, public outreach. Uh, and so uh, this is where we went in to, to do the, the additional public outreach, and this is the cost associated with that public that, outreach. Those were the meetings at the museum that you were referring to earlier. Co correct. And uh, the, again, the cost to announce it, uh, both in the newspaper, uh, print media, and uh, uh, online electronic uh, media is where we wanted to make sure, plus the printing out of all the different uh, documentations associated with, with, um, with that additional tasking that the board had requested for. Suju Smasi for that input, and that helps put those two pieces together, uh, what we were talking about earlier and what we're talking about now. now. Um, in the, the budget request that we have uh, from you from the informational hearing uh, for 2020, there are uh, some contractual amounts in there for a total of uh, $450,000. Is that related to uh, phase eight? Um, when, you, when you had in that budget, um, and you mentioned three contractual amounts, is, can you explain what, that, what work that's related to? I, um, yes, uh, Madam Chair, if you, if you look at Schedule B, uh, on the on the budget that we provided, it, it lists uh, the different studies that uh, we wanted to do in terms of uh, uh, making sure that uh, we we move forward in terms of developing Haganya or or uh, revitalizing Haganya. One of that is the the Haganya River Channeling and Watershed Study, uh, the Riverwalk Esplanade Development uh, District uh, Feasibility Study, the Paseo de Susana an Adeloup uh, redevelopment uh, study, and then, of course, reestablishing uh, events within Hagatnya uh, prior to World War II and, uh, and even now. This is what we mentioned at the meeting, that we should have a, a Serena Festival where we include the women as a part of the thing where they have a, uh, a, uh, a, like a derby with women uh, uh, doing a fishing derby, involved in the fishing derby. And, and other things associated with it, but in, in Hagatnya. Again, in the legend, not only of Serena, but of the fish that caught, I mean, the, 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 the fish that was caught eating half of, a, uh, half of Guam. That, By the women again, yes. Right, they, it was in Hagatnya Bay that they did it. So we wanted to uh, include that as part of the overall events within Hagatnya and become a permanent um, uh, uh, celeb uh, celebration. Okay, so um, at least the first part or two is maybe related to uh, uh, phase seven, uh, or maybe uh, do these do these each fit in with one of the phases? Like the I think the first one you mentioned was that the river, some some of the work of the river. The the watershed and the the Esplanade development study, yeah. is part of the feasibility update. Remember, one of the things that uh, will be done will be doing a, a, um, um, uh, the, uh, the courses of action associated with that and how much it would cost to do each of those right. actions. And so you know, which, which phase would you say that that's associated uh, with? That's phase or seven. This, okay, phase seven. And then uh, for the Paseo study, that feasibility study for some of the uh, proposed projects there, does that fit in with one of the phases? Uh, no, it doesn't fit into the phases, but the Adeloup redevelopment, uh, one of the things we're looking at, or one of the things that was, when, they, when they did the public hearing that came out of the public hearing, was the, what do we do about Adeloup? Uh, there's no convention center, and so one of the things we're looking at is to take Adeloup, the portion where the governor's office is at, and redevelop that into a, a hotel convention center, 
uh, for, for Hagatnya or for Guam so that we, we ha actually have one. Uh, right now, uh, all hotels uh, provide the, the, uh, the facility or rather the, uh, it, but it's a ballroom, not necessarily a convention center. And so uh, th this is one okay. of the things we wanted to, to push out. And then, of course, the Paseo de Susana, uh, we want to we wanna actually develop that Right. Uh, into something. With, with these feasibility studies, um, are these what were recommended, or was it the board? Uh, where did where did the idea of these come from, or how is it they were prioritized as one of the first things to be doing? Uh, the the HRA board of commissioners at the time uh, uh, had asked, uh, okay, what do we need to do to get moving forward? Uh, they, had, uh, they had requested from Gita because Gita had already done a, a plan dealing with, with, uh, with the Paseo area, but we, they wanted to make sure that that was updated uh, uh, with, with in, the, in terms of the Paseo plan development. There was nothing for Adaloop, so they said, what do we need to do for Adaloop? Well, we need to do a study so we can combine those portions uh, into, into uh, one study and, and come up with the course of action that we really want to move forward on. So yeah, uh, the, the, re the matrix was asked by the Board of Commissioners to come up with, uh, with um, estimates on this, and, okay. and uh, the cost was, was driven by, by uh, what was the, the cost of what Gita had done with the, the plans, what GBB had done with their, with their plans, and, and so the, the estimated cost at the time, by the way, this goes back four years. <laughs> Uh, okay. The request was done four years ago initially and submitted every single year to do a, a study and the board uh, approved each of the, the budget to say, let's move forward on this. Okay, and so um, again, with our newly impaneled board, uh, these are things that they may be very interested in looking at and, and deciding whether they move forward with or, or what the next steps are going to be. And so those are, are likely going to be something that they're very interested in looking at. So um, just to catch you up, Mr. Kaswani, so we were talking about um, possible work that the Board of Commissioners might want to be looking at in the near future, and that would be, um, sorry, I'm going to just summarize them, and, uh, but uh, related to the river feasibility study, there are some elements there, uh, the river walk feasibility study and Adeloupe Paseo feasibility study. So. Um, those will be things that the Board of Commissioners will likely be looking at and, and seeing if those are the next steps as far as studies go that they're interested in pursuing. But by the way, Madam Chair, the, yes. um, originally uh, about four years ago, the uh, legislature had requested from the HRA uh, projects, they were going to give HRA a million dollars. And, uh, and, uh, uh, in, that, in that million dollars that they were going to give, they wanted HRA to come up with uh, the vision or the plans to do a feasibility study. So these are the feasibility studies that were, were provided. This is why there's 300,000 that was given by the, the legislature to fund the uh, update of the, uh, of the river study. Uh, and so the, the rest, the, se the 700,000 was not given to HRA. Was was it a separate three hundred thousand dollars that was identified for studying the square footage needed? I, I I'm not going to refer to it properly, um, but there was some legislation saying that before any of these administrative buildings were going to be built, there needed to be some sort of study to properly assess the square footage needed, et cetera. That's that's a different. Is that study. was that a different? That, that, was, that was a different set of 300,000. No, it's just the 300,000. Uh, it's yeah, interesting that, that it shows up twice. Yeah, that, that, that's a totally different okay. um, uh, thing. Uh, we, when we provided the reply to the, to the legislature, we requested that, that, uh, that if, if they're going to do it and they're going to go down this road, that uh, HRA uh, uh, deal with it. But I guess when they came back, they made it clear that it's only DPW has to go out for bid. DPW has to, even though we recommended that we have an existing contract with a, with a, uh, with a, with Matrix Design Group, uh, they made it clear, nope, they want it to be separated. 
out. So we provided all the documentation of all the studies, the updates, and everything associated with that to the Department of Public Works uh, for them to do the job. But, and then we made several requests as to where they were at and no, no, uh, no reply. And again, uh, just to catch Mr. Kaswani up a little bit, um, I, I'm not sure if you were here for this discussion, but uh, you'll be looking forward to a very productive year, I believe, where uh, the board will be able to do things like look through the final working draft of the zoning code. That will be something that the board can be working on. Um, Mr. Santos, I believe, mentioned a couple of other things that in order to be final final are pending um, the HRA board of commissioners working through them. And so um, again, maybe as you've mentioned before, maybe the board of commissioners will want to set up a process to have some technical review and then uh, those sort of things. And maybe even a, a technical review presentation, you know, uh, but that will be up for the board to decide for itself. But it sounds like there are a few things like the zoning code and some other things that you'll be getting to work on and uh, determine how to finalize. So it's, I think that's something for us all to be looking forward to and each one is a step forward, right? It's like being able to close that out and move on. So I really look forward to as being able to, to get some of those uh, really completed and then moving on to the next step. Um, so I, I look forward to all of that. Did anybody have, uh, did you have any final questions? No, Senator, I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay with uh, the way that thing is going. We have, we have a lot of, uh, uh, we have a lot of things that we need to work on, okay? Um, it gives us a good understanding or this, this session gives us a good understanding of where we've been and how we got here. Um, my, my, emphasis going forward will be is regardless of how we got here or where we've been, what do we do with what we have now and, and the products that have been produced and how do we move forward in an efficient and very methodical way. And that may require some change in the thinking on how we're going to go forward. Maybe there was some processes and thought processes on how we were going to move forward, but when the new board comes on, we will have to debate and talk about really some innovative ways to move this program forward. Uh, my, my comment is that we, the contract has been awarded in 2004, and we are in 2009, I mean 2014, and we're in 2019, so it's taken us about four and a half, five years almost, to get where we got. And if it takes five years to do a feasibility study or our master plan, I wonder how long the program is going to take to implement. It will probably not be in my lifetime. So I would like to see the board take some action along with HRRA and direct them and give them guidance so we can move some of these products and the projects that we've got in there forward to do a little baby, maybe a fast track some of these projects through to completion so that we can have something to show for it during this administration governorship, not other than wait for another five, six years to complete more studies. So that, that's going to be my emphasis and that's going to be the emphasis that I'm going to make with our board of directors, working with HRRA and working with our partners at GIDA. Sujus Masi for that. I think that's a strength that you bring you had mentioned at the informational briefing that uh, you've been part of projects. Uh, I still have to get the name of the city that you helped build, but he was saying that he was in Saudi Arabia and from the desert, basically uh, from the ground up, they built a city over 28 years. And so I think that's excellent expertise in helping us find, and no pun intended, concrete steps forward <laughs> where we can to see some physical manifestations of this plan. Uh, as you're saying, maybe certain elements of it can be worked on uh, maybe simultaneously along with studies or we can find out uh, at what phase those studies make the most sense, so. 
the city, the city in Saudi Arabia that exists today, that was a 28-year project. And uh, it was a city from the ground up, about uh, $35 billion, $40 billion. And uh, that city now exists. It's called Jambu Industrial City. They have ports, they have airports, they have roads, infrastructure, you know, highways, buildings, high-rise buildings, you know, single-family homes. Actually, this is basically a city of about half a million people that was built from ground up. So there is, there is uh, if you have the right vision and the right people to work through that vision, there is the possibility to do that. Now, I am a little bit, I will make this point and leave it at that. We have a lot of skeptics, and we will have a lot of skeptics, and we'll have a lot of people pushing back on why we're doing this. We haven't been able to do anything for X number of years, but we have to move forward and overcome those objections one by one so that we can move forward. Dreamers don't drop their dreams because somebody says it cannot be done. The people that say it cannot be done are the people that give up and move on to something else. And I like to be a part of the board that says we can be done and here's how we can do it. Working with the partners here, and working with supporting HRRA and working with the partners, I think we can get a job done. And it will be good for all of us if in the next three or four, three, three and a half years, we're able to get a physical manifestation of some work that has been done, something off, out of the ground that demonstrates that we are committed to the programs. Uh, well said, uh, absolutely. And I think at that point, uh, we can definitely use uh, Rita Frankes's uh, sort of uh, re-envisioning of the HRA, and we can all stand together and say, hurrah. <laughs> so uh, with there not being any other questions or inquiries, uh, there being none, the committee will conclude today's discussion and further reconvene additional roundtable informational briefings. I really thank everybody for their time here. I know it's, you've been sitting here a while and patiently answering all kinds of questions, but because this has been going on for 20, 25 years, it's been through three contractors uh, in multiple phases, multiple board of commissioners and staff. Uh, I think it's really been helpful to help untangle some of the issues so that we can really see exactly where we're at, uh, some of the work that the board and the HRA staff have ahead of them and, uh, and so forth. So with that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the committee will be continuing to receive testimonies for the next few days. Please address written comments to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Haganya Revitalization, Self-Determination and Regional Affairs by email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or personally deliver your written comments to the second floor of the Guam Congress Building, 163 Chalan Santo Papa, Haganya, Guam. Sidus Maasi for your attendance and participation in today's roundtable informational briefing. The time is now uh, 3.50. Have a good evening and afternoon. <laughs>